This is Dan of Vagabond Awake. As you know, the Philippines is one of my favorite places in the world to retire cheap in paradise. But if you're, if you're, if this is one of your first times going to a, a country with a low per capita income, you're going to suffer some cultural shock. And I think you need to have your eyes wide open um, so you can go in with the correct expectations so your uh, visit or, or your future life in the Philippines has a better chance of being successful. Um, and uh, so after I tell you uh, the things that I think are going to shock you in the Philippines, um, then I'll tell you why I think that even though those will shock you, I think you're going to love it as much as I do. Okay, so the first thing you're going to notice coming from, let's say, the United States or Europe, let's start with that as a premise, Canada, somewhere where, where things uh, you know, are more Western, if you want to call it. Um, the first thing you'll notice is the Internet. Um, the Internet is not as strong or reliable in the Philippines in a general sense than it is around uh, maybe your home country. Um, and that can really be annoying to you if you're used to uh, that being reliable. However, um, it's often the case in, in much of the Philippines uh, that you can get a premium service, and so uh, you'll have to do a little research on that um, outside this video to pick what areas that is, if that's important to you. And also, even within cities, um, you may find that you can get a good internet connections in some parts and not other parts, and so you can overcome that. But don't be shocked when it happens when you first get there. Um, now, by the way, I have a food about how to pick the, I have a, a video about how to pick uh, the best apartments around the world as you travel. And in that video, I explain how to, to get good internet in the Philippines. I'll put a link to that uh, for you. Next up is the food. Uh, Filipinos have very sweet food. There's a lot of fat in their food and there's a lot of meats and, and most of the vegetables are, are fairly cooked, um, but they do have a lot of fresh fruits. Um, and so if you're someone from the part of the world and you're into like a lot of fresh vegetables and salads and that kind of thing, uh, you might be uh, a little bit shocked. But the good news is all that stuff's in the market. It's just not as common to see it in restaurants. Um, and so you'll have to make that stuff at home. So that'll be shocking for you. Um, the next thing is the pollution. Um, in, in the Philippines, especially in the larger cities, um, you'll see litter. Uh, you know, in open fields or in streets, and and you'll um, in in rivers, you'll often even smell a river walking by that's polluted, that kind of thing. And you'll see trash in some parts of the Philippines coming up from the beach, uh, from the ocean, um, and that's that might be shocking to you. Um, and um, a lot of people just like they're in a beautiful beach and they'll see some trash around them and they'll say, "Why don't they pick this up?" I, I have a suggestion: go ahead and bring a bag along with you. You travel and you pick it up. Um, there was a time in the West where there was uh, trash everywhere too, to be honest with you, but it was, it was movie stars and sports, uh, uh, famous sports people and movie stars and that w did commercials and, and taught people to pick stuff up. And, and so maybe you can be a good example to get that started. Um, next up, I would say um, poverty. Uh, a lot of the West have really high per capita incomes. And so there's a lot of things we take for granted in the West. Um, uh, and a, there's a lot of things that we have money to, just to spend extra things on. And it's not, it's not always the case throughout the Philippines, especially in larger cities and neighborhoods uh, where um, uh, people aren't making as much money. It might be a little bit shocking to you. Um, if you've done quite a bit of travel, it won't be shocking to you at all. It's uh, much of the world is that way also. Uh, but you will see, um, because... Um, it, it, you know, you will see people that, uh, you know, may need an operation, but they're just walking around like everything's okay and power, all the power to them. Um, uh, they're just getting through life the best they can, but that might shock you a little bit. Um, and, um, and, but again, I'm going to tell you why, you know, it's, it's a lovely place at the end. Um, next up, I would say if, um, it would be like bugs, um, there aren't, honestly, we didn't see a lot of mosquitoes and that kind of thing in, in the Philippines. We didn't see a lot of, it, it wasn't, you know, one of the worst places for bugs. But some of the bugs are, are a problem. Like, um, like, there aren't as many mosquitoes in some places, from my experience in the Philippines. But they do have malaria there. They do have dengue. And they do have some poisonous snakes. 
Now, where I'm from, we have poisonous snakes, but maybe in some, somewhere in the West you don't have them, and that's something you don't have to worry about. But when you come to the Philippines and you're hiking in the jungle, you have to think about you know keeping an eye out. And, and when you, I, I travel with a um, a um, uh, uh, mosquito net, and I sleep with a mosquito net around me, which gives me a good comfort. And I'll, I have a, a video about that. I'll put in the links below too, um, where to get or the type of um, net that I have. Um, and also my bug, how I deal with bugs, I have a video on that, I'll leave, leave you uh, below for you to watch. Um, uh, next up is traffic. It's not true all over the Philippines, in the small, in the, in the provinces they call them, uh, with their smaller populations, uh, there, you know, there's not, there can be no traffic at all. But in, in some cities, you know, Cebu and Manila and, and Duma, uh, Dumaguete at uh, rush hour, there can be a lot of people. And so if you're from a small town and you move to the Philippines uh, or you're uh, you're just not used to having traffic around you, um, you'll, you may have to uh, vary the time of day that you do different things and not try not to be in traffic if you're in one of those bigger cities and that kind of thing. Um, and, uh, um, and then finally, um, one of the things I noticed about the beaches uh, that are a little bit different is that they're kind of far from where you live. Um, so it's not the end of the world. Um, and to be honest with you, when you live some, when you go on a vacation, you're on a one week, two week vacation, whatever, in some beautiful place in the Philippines or wherever, you're going to get in a more expensive place right near the beach with white sand, turquoise water and all that, somewhere like Boracay or Siki Horse, there's places you can go. Um, but in day to day life, those aren't often where a lot of the expats live. Uh, they often live in places like Dumaguete or Cebu in the city or just all over the Philippines. There are expats and locals they live. And there isn't always a beach close by. You might take you 10 or 15 or 20 minutes scooter ride or hop on a ferry for 20 30 minutes and to be in the most beautiful beach in the world um, but but in other places of the world where you're staying is just a few blocks from the beach almost no matter where you stay in that country so it may shock you that many expats are just not really that close to the beach even though all the pictures and stuff you see it shows them uh, you know are showing beaches and uh, you know beautiful waterfalls or whatever you might have to get on your scooter and ride a little bit from where you live and then finally, I would say healthcare uh, in the Philippines uh, might uh, uh, be a bit shocking to you in, in a certain way. And that is a lot of people live in areas uh, where um, it's, it's either fairly remote from a hospital or um, if they were to get or they're, or they're doing things that are remote from a hospital, they're going on hikes and waterfalls and lakes or uh, the ocean or they're tearing a ferry ride somewhere where if something were to happen, it could take hours to get to a hospital. Um, and then depending if you're in a remote part of the Philippines, the hospital you could get to um, would be, it wouldn't have the kind of services you might expect to get to in the West. So um, you may have to um, uh, think about that depending on your health, of course, like how far do I want to be from a hospital? How am I going to get there? Um, they don't have like, you know, in, in, in Europe or the or Australia or the wet, you know, Canada, America, they might have like a helicopter. When somebody falls on a hike, you know, you see you see in the you know the T V shows and stuff, so a helicopter comes in and they drop a, a stretcher and a rope and you know, they're at a hospital and you know, an hour or something, and 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 that's not going to be the case in the Philippines. So you have to take that into consideration. How far am I from a hospital? If I do this activity, am I, am I even further? How am I going to get to the hospital? Um, they, and um, and so that's another thing that might be shocking to you. And so you have to think about where you want to be in the hospital in the Philippines, based on your health. Now there there are parts of the Philippines um, that have more hospitals and are uh, generally in the higher population areas, um, but. Often those aren't the best places to live. They're either too crowded or more polluted or the beaches are further away or whatever. So it's kind of a balancing act. And, and so you have to think this through um, as one of the considerations of where you're going to be in the Philippines. Um, okay, now I, I told you that the Philippines is it, it, it's almost now almost always went in my one of my top five places in the world to retire for cheap um, because it's just such stunning scenery. You've seen all the YouTube videos and that's just so true. Um, and so you have these gorgeous beaches and white sand beaches of turquoise water and waterfalls and and often in these areas, uh, one of the benefits of being remote from a, a city is that it's not unusual to end up on one of these beaches and not have a lot of people around you. Even though, you know, the Philippines has larger cities, uh, people aren't on, you know, every day they're not, since they're not three, four, five, six minute 
walk from the beach, they have to, you know, take a day to go do it and spend the day at the beach. And so if you go to like during a weekday when you retire, boy, you're talking about not only being on a beautiful beach, but having few, few, if, if any people around you, depending on what beach you go to and whatnot. So, and that same, same thing goes for waterfalls. And, uh, and so it, it has a real feeling, a, uh, much of the Philippines, like you're alone somewhere that's just absolutely stunning. The other thing about the Philippines, and, and that's really hard to, to get to convey even in film but when you're there it really settles into you that you're really in this beautiful place um and so uh, that's one of the things about the philippines i think where it stands head and shoulders above much of the most of the world is how beautiful it is the next the next thing is the people uh the people of the philippines are just really sweet people um it's a very um it's a lovely culture and um and, and just like everywhere else, like I'm from America, you know, bigger cities, people are in a hurry, that kind of thing. They're, they're paying attention to, to, they're running faster, trying to, you know, pay their rent because it's higher in the cities. And it's the same in the Philippines. You go to Manila or Cebu, uh, the people are not going to have as much time to be friendly. But as you get into smaller towns um, around the Philippines, you'll notice that they're just some of the nicest people in the world and very friendly and helpful and um uh, great disposition. So uh, the, I would say the Philippines, it's hard to say which is better, um, the, the stunning nature or the people there. Those two are just definitely really what make the Philippines. Um, and th next up, I would say is the weather. I mean, they do have, you know, hurricane, uh, they call them typhoons, I guess. Um, and, um, but, but, you know, they rarely hit any particular spot in the island over and over and over again. It's, it's just the same as the Caribbean or like, uh, you know, and so the chance of at any one time of you hitting in uh, a hurricane are pretty low, and um, uh, you can watch the weather if you want and get up get up the mountain into a one of the shelters they have around the Philippines if one's coming um, into a, a typhoon. But the rest of the year, wow! I mean, it's uh, Philippines. It's seven thousand islands, and it's. Uh, it's all you're fairly close to the ocean wherever you are in the Philippines, and so that means that the the ocean temperature is making the weather temperate. Um, you do have a rainy, you know, you have rainy season and and more sunny season. But overall, the Philippines it's really just hard to beat the weather. They do they do have times when they're muggy and whatnot. But if you like warmer weather like me, really it's just hard to beat uh, the Philippine weather. Um, another thing. In addition to the stunning uh, landscapes and beaches and whatnot, I mean, if you throw on a mask or you're a scuba diver and you get below that water level, just the color of the animals, turtles, just the sea life in the Philippines um, is just really amazing and your access to it to get to it quickly. I mean, I, like I stayed in uh, Dumaguete during the coronavirus lockdown for uh, Chiang and I did for maybe seven months and we had a chance to go to Apo Island. Um, and I think on one one dive that lasted maybe 30 minutes, I, th I think we saw like seven or eight turtles or something. It was just crazy the amount of turtles we saw and a beautiful, colorful starfish and just a beautiful, uh, going underwater is amazing in the Philippines. Um, and it really gets you in touch with nature. Um, and so another thing that's nice about the Philippines, it's really hard to beat. You can go there um, from, from many Western countries like... I'm from the U.S., Europe, Canada, I mean, Australia. You just go there and, and they stamp you with, um, you know, your first 28 days or 30 days or whatever it is. And, um, and then you can just keep extending, extending, extending for up to 36 months. And you don't have to worry about getting retirement visas or, or doing visa runs for three years. Can you imagine that? And so... Uh, and then on top of that, for, for, on top of all of that, for it to be cheap to live there... Um, and to have um, such amazing nature available to you and such nice people, it really stands up head and shoulders. Um, and I, I'll put a video below uh, the top places in the world to retire cheap so you can get, you know, get it in context with other countries. But it really is an amazing place. So there, but there is a culture shock. Uh, if you're new to traveling the world or you know, if you haven't been to a lot of countries that have lower uh, uh, domestic product per, per citizen, um, then uh, th those are the things that you're going to notice about the Philippines. Um, and um, so go in with your eyes wide open uh, and then you have a better chance of really seeing the true Philippines um, uh, and really getting to love it like I have. So thanks for watching this video. This is Dan of Vagabond Awake, the YouTube uh, channel for Vagabond Buddha. 
And I'll put all those links below, I promise. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you liked our video, please like, comment, or subscribe. Any of that would help our business. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Click the link in the notes below this video to get a copy of this content. Plus, grab a free copy of my ebook, How I Fired My Boss and Traveled the World for 13 Years. While you're there, check out our catalog of retired cheap reports all over the world and our hobby income course that we just released. Thanks so much.